I call the meeting to order, please. We call the meeting to order. Thank you. This is the November meeting of the Rollinsburg Planning Board. Um, thank you all for coming. On the agenda tonight, first up is the Shady Lane subdivision. Um, hello. So just to give a little background, um, I assume you're recusing yourself. Well, I'm not recusing. Uh, continue with your next thing. Okay. Uh, Glenn, you'll be a voting member for tonight um, for this matter before the board. So at the last meeting, <clears throat> we decided to seek legal counsel for the, the uh, land use attorney that the town needed. Um, he suggested that we need uh, two variances for this particular project. Uh, one to make the existing lot more non-conforming and one to make the new lot. Um, <clears throat> I know that the applicant has some additional information they want to share with us. Um, and then we'll open it back up for public comment. And so, Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Absolutely. I just uh, start by saying that the last planning board meeting a month ago we had, uh, the board did open a public hearing on the matter and took uh, testimony from the applicant, um, captain's agents, and the public. Um, I think just as a matter of protocol at this juncture, the board should uh, vote as to whether the application is complete. Yep. And we can thereafter start the clock and move on. Okay. If, if that's the way you want to play it, um, that's fine. Um, so <clears throat> I did some research, and in the uh, planning board guide for local officials, um, I did find that the planning board. Um, okay, so the choices are to accept the application as complete. Or, or not, basically. <clears throat> I, I believe we cannot not accept it as complete based on other conditions, other, uh, an exemption uh, from the ZBA. Um, Back up, Miles, you said you cannot not accept it. Right. We, you must accept it, in other words? That's according to the... I, I would disagree. I don't think you can accept it. If someone needs a variance and they don't have it, I, I, don't, I don't believe you have the authority to accept it, and I don't think you can accept it. I, I don't know if it really matters, because to accept and deny, or to not accept, we're, yep. we're, we get the same result. Yep. Um, and I don't want to sell you on one position or the other, but generally boards will not accept an application as complete. If there are flaw, if there are zoning flaws that haven't been cured by the by the zoning board, that's and that's been that's been our protocol for years. Um, but I, I don't, you know, for the if you want to if you want to accept and open and open the public and then and allow discussion, I don't, I don't, I don't yep. I'm so, not opposed to that. So so if the board does accept the application as complete, accept public comment, uh, then we have the choice of. Approving the application, conditionally approving it, or disapproving it, um, is, is my understanding. That's right. <clears throat> so, I mean, I, I'm only going by the information that I was able to uncover. Um, but I, I'm going to leave it to the board to make the motions and, and decide this based on the, the merits of the application. I think at this point, if you're asking me if the application that is submitted, the plans that I saw last time, and the plans that have remained unchanged since last time, um, as complete, I see them as complete. The fact that whether or not it, it doesn't meet uh, zoning ha violations haven't been cured or that it needs to go to subsequent boards, yes, that is the fact. But if you're asking at this point in time if the application is complete to be submitted, I, I, I think it is. Um, so I would, I would believe in, in that direction. You make a motion? You asked for comment. That was <coughs> okay. Sound like a motion. I, I would entertain a motion to accept. I'll make that motion. Okay. Is there a second? Okay. 
All in favor of accepting the application as complete? Aye. 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 Okay. <coughs> Mr. Connolly. Okay. Well, uh, in the interest of time, um, we did present our plans last month, uh, so I don't see the, the value of uh, presenting them again. It's a very simple two lot subdivision. Get five acres um, located on the corner of Rollins Road and Shady Lane. Um, 109 feet of frontage on Rollins Road and uh, about 700 feet on Shady Lane. Um, after subdivision, both lots conform in terms of, uh, in our opinion, in terms of area and in terms of frontage. Um, uh, both lots having more than adequate frontage on a um, municipal road. It's a class six road, but it is a municipal road and access from same. Um, so as such, we would ask that you uh, uh, consider uh, our application uh, for approval and uh, move to approve it. And um, just for the record, we um, have received a copy of Tony uh, Radigan's opinion as solicited by this board after the last planning board meeting. Um, Attorney Radigan corresponded with this board in his October 10, 2017 correspondence. It makes five points, um, none of them which we agree with. Um, we believe that, again, it has frontage. Um, it is a municipal road. It is a municipal road that frontage and access can be derived from. Um, so as such, we believe it's an entire, entirely actionable application. Uh, with me this evening at the table is uh, Jason Lavoy and his wife Megan is sitting behind him. And uh, Attorney Sh Bill Shaheen is with us as well. Um, I don't know if, if I, any of them want to uh, <coughs> weigh in, but um, I think I've said everything that I need to say at this point. Okay. Um, <coughs> I think the, the board members saw Attorney Fredegan's letter. Um, so we have the advice of a, an attorney. Um, that the town uses. Um, we have the applicant with their own attorney who disputes these points. <clears throat> um, I, I'm, I'm kind of looking for input from. Uh, I give input in that um, I did see Attorney Radigan's and I, and I have read the plans as well. And um, I think a lot of it depends on making, you know, you had mentioned making a existing lot less conforming by labeling it more conforming because of how you're viewing Shady Lane, whether it be the perception on one side or the other or interpretation of the wording. Um, in my mind, if you're asking for input as you were, um, I think it doesn't meet the guidelines of having proper road frontage on a proper, and I'm not going to use the word proper, um, as I understand, and once again, my own perception, because this is just input, um, that the second lot doesn't meet the, the classification of fronting on a or, or road, street, way, public, however the terminology is, um, I think if the back <coughs> fails them, unfortunately. Can you guys just swing that door closed? Thank you very much. Um, <coughs> the ordinance is very clear to me. I think I'm going to classify a road, so a variant from the ZPA is needed. And there's no issue of, of not performing a lot. Right? The zoning doesn't say it has to be a class five zone. The wrong for zoning. Subdivision regulations say that. That which we've asked the waiver from section 9.15. Yeah. If I could just add um, one thing, Mr. Chairman. Um, point number one of Attorney Radigan's um, correspondence mm -hmm. states that. Uh, we are setting forth a more non-conforming lot because we're taking 10 feet of plus away from it. <clears throat> and that's because this 10-foot sliver has been proposed to be dedicated as part of Shady Lane yeah. to allow Shady Lane at some point, should it ever need to, to have a full 50-foot wide right-of-way. And that's just not part of our own goodwill, but that is also part of discussions we've had with this board and with the previous chair over the past year 
Furthermore, it's part of municipal this municipality's policy recently adopted with regard to lots and building permits on Class 6 highways. It states therein that if it's not a wide enough right-of-way, if it's not at least 50 feet wide, if you can add land to it by a giving of a slice of land, then do so. And we are doing so. So, it, you know, it really, w without uh, belaboring the point, seems to be putting us, according to Attorney Radigan, into a catch-22 situation. We've, we're trying to follow the rules here, and as such, we're being flagged with a penalty flag saying, oh, no, you can't do that. You've got to go to the Zoning Board of Adjustment. Well, but, Paul, you've got to admit you're creating that problem. If you had 220 feet of front and you gave up 10 feet, it wouldn't be an issue. True. True. So you're creating, I mean, you admit you're creating, you're, you're taking away it, 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 front and 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 front uh, you know, I, I don't, I, I don't, under, I don't. Under, under state law, it states that your class six can be punished. So how, there's, I mean, in our deed, we own 800 feet on shady land, which is adequate frontage under state law. So how is it done? I, I, listen, I, I've worked in, in many state, in many, many communities in New Hampshire. I mean, probably 30, 30 municipalities in, in this state, maybe more. I don't know one of them that would consider class six road. State law does. Jason, we're going to disagree, right? <laughs> yeah. And we're going to disagree, and apparently our attorney disagrees. So, uh, you know, I mean, it's it, it's an argument you can have with the zoning board, and if, if well, they, we can't if they agree with you. up as we go. I'm not making up anything. I, you clearly are, though. Okay, okay, I'm making up <laughs> But I mean, it's a law that we can, you're denying me frontage. You're denying me the frontage on Shady Lane, which is a public road. And so how are you, why are you not including that as frontage? I'm, I'm not a voting member of this board. I'm the board's technical. You're advising them. Yeah, and, and they can, they can, you can, you should make your argument to them, not me. That's my argument. Anyway, this, this catch-22 needs to be on the record. Municipal policy recently adopted needs to be on the record, as well as Attorney Radigan's opinion and our, dis and our disagreement with it. It's not a policy, Mr. Collins. There's a set of guidelines. It's a guide that's left for it. There is a difference. I think you know that. But there's a difference between policies and guidelines. So. Um, I, I'm, I apologize I'm if I didn't use the that. wrong word, but if, if the guideline is the proper word, then the, um, the guidelines don't have force of, uh, of law, right? True. So, I think I'll be splitting hairs on that. So, do, do, does the board agree that funding to be interested in the classics room is adequate frontage? I would answer the question that, that um, if I pulled it before here at the planning board with and, and with attorney opinion, you know, outside counsel hired for this specific situation and not saying, we're, uh, my thought is that it's not my position on this board as this board to make that decision when we have a zoning board of adjustment. And, but the, and, and but the, the, and because you have fair due to be heard, absolutely, you have fair due to argue your point, absolutely, and you should be heard and respected for that. But as I sit on this board, I, I don't have the knowledge or the responsibility, or, you know, the ability to proper respect you being heard. I think that is a zoning board of adjustment, and we have that process here. But why would I first spend more money, second go to a board that I don't mean to go to? Whereas your attorney clearly states a class road can be a public road. And I assume Shady Lane, a class six road, remains open to the public, which it does. Basically, we're splitting hairs over whether the road should be paved or not. And he clearly states in his rebuttal to Miles that he doesn't see it to meet all requirements. Whereas we have other dirt roads in town that have been accepted. <coughs> We have other dirt roads in town that have been accepted as being used as as roads, whether they're private or class six. So I guess why is this? Happening? But specifically. 
between here, Miles. I do not re read where it says on advice of the, this particular attorney who's very familiar with the situation, where he says Shady Lane, as it sits today, with the enhancements or changes that the interested parties are willing to do to make it more conforming, if it is in his opinion, if indeed that is a buildable law, specifically that question. I know this is a lot about you know the capacities of the road currently, but not specifically as it pertains to their to their, to their cause. The outline of Shady Lane, and he's pretty much casting, in my opinion, he doesn't know the answer whether the road specs that Paul designed on the plan are adequate for vehicular traffic. And I think that question can easily be answered. No, I think what he says in the letter is that they don't meet all town standards. So what are the all town standards? Is it have road standards and the subdivision regulations? So that it Class five highway standards. So then you can give us a conditional approval if we pave the road? It'd have to be twenty four feet width and paved with a call. Is that really what the town wants though? I mean, well, I'm not I trying to the I, I, I think the easiest route, I think the best recourse would be to get a bearing. I, mean, just I don't need one, though, that's what I'm saying. It's okay. easier for Paul to draw the paint on the plan and get a continued approval. I'll pay the 24 feet if that's what you want. And then we meet all town road specs and then we can approve it. I would agree. I think if you want to build a town I, road. I, I still think there's an issue. So the planning no, board doesn't yeah. have authority to. No, I think, no, I think, I think Jason's are absolutely right. If they dedicate 10 feet of right-of-way, so it's a 50-foot right-of-way, they build the road, they build that road to town standards, which means yep. with but materials, then it's a class five highway. And they have the right to, then, 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 the, issue goes, then the issue goes away. Or any, you know, I mean, I suppose you could. The issue goes away, but it flips the catch 22 no. on to the no, town. You've got because nobody wants it paved. Oh, I, I, I mean that's not an issue. I, I don't know anything about that. But um. I mean, I, I think it's. I think I'm, we're going way above and beyond the specs of the road. If that's what's going to get it done, we're going to pave it. We'll pave it. Okay. <clears throat> and then, and then, neither lot is non-conforming. We need all aspects. Yep. I would agree with that. Sure. Okay. Uh, so I'd ask for a vote on a condition of approval that. You're getting ahead of yourself a little bit because we're going to open this up for public comment. Sure. Um, are there any members of the public that have comment at this time? I have a question. So, like, well, I just came in, so excuse me if I'm repeating or asking something that's already sure, addressed. Address. Um, 426 Washington Street. But to change the road from a class 6 road to a class 5 road, does it need approval by the whole town at the legislative body meeting to be accepted as a road? Well, except, oh, you want to speak To be accepted as a town accepted. road, it would, but, so I'm still trying to figure out the, the section from Radigan, but, um, Shady Lane's a class six road. All right, the step of approval of the Board of Selectmen to upgrade Shady Lane from a class six Roads are class five with town roads required, and that can be accomplished by the selectman doing a highway layout, uh, which can be done via veteran assessment for say 23122 a Roman four. Where a town meeting can both upgrade the status of a class six to a class five town road. So how are we? Are we getting ahead of ourselves? It would still be a class six road. It would just be built to spec. It would just exactly. Yep. Yeah. There's no obligation to the town to maintain it. Um, it would, it would just be like laying out a brand new road in a subdivision that was built to built the town standards. Right. The town isn't, isn't you know, uh, agreeing to accept it. Right. <clears throat> so then there would be, um, then there would be uh, MS4 implications right, for, for, for adding additional uh, service surface for the town. John? Yeah, and I'm in no way suggesting that this is the right solution. I mean, I, I think the solution is to get a variance and to build a lesser, flat, you know, and to get to right. have them approve it. Because I think right. it's, I mean, to spend thirty thousand dollars to pave a road that's, it, I think it's, it's ridiculous. I, I would get a variance or try to get a variance first, but um, it's your call. You know, I don't know, and I don't know what the cost is to pave. It's a long road. Six hundred feet, right? More than that, <coughs> isn't it? I'll pay you. 444 is, yeah, 60, you'd have to have 650 feet of paper. That's, that's all right. Okay. 
don't know if that answered your question. Oh, it answered the question that the road can be built, but it does not have to be accepted by the town. Correct. Yep. And then for it to be maintained and accepted by the town, it would have to go through town meeting. That's from what I'm getting from the conversation. Correct. Is that how it works in Rural Street? Mm -hmm. Sometimes the selectmen say. Well, we, yeah, no, we'll do it the the you lay out the town right. meeting. Is we'll lay it out for the town meeting. Yeah. Except Mr. Bendivers? Yes, yeah, Alan Bendivers, uh, 84 Rollins Road. Question I have is, are you looking at a class five status road to build here? Or, so that has to, coming off a state road, that has to be brought up through state specs, not no. some side street specs. Town specs. It would be town specs. Which, which has to be dug down yep. several feet. Yeah, several okay. hundred by several hundred feet, I think. I think Jason was saying about 450 well, feet. It's about 600, I think it's about 645 feet, but yeah, somewhere in that range. Times yeah. by 50 feet, correct? Well, no, 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 the road isn't, the, the, the road, the, the right way is 50 feet, the, uh, the road width is, uh, I don't know, 22, 24, Paul, I can't We've got a graduate right. scale. I think the sure. municipal We've got a subdivision graduate. regulations call for a 24 foot width, typically in a 50 foot right of way. However, that even that's often waived depending on where the subdivision right. um, is. Uh, depending on the traffic. For the sake of not having overkilled the road for no other reason to meet a, a uh, an arbitrary town spec. So if the road is brought up and paved, which we agree to do, then in the future we could come back and ask for the road to be accepted by the town. Mm -hmm. I don't believe to this board, I believe the select board. Right, to the select board. <clears throat> yep. But the state still falls that road being built, correct? No, the state has no, the state wouldn't have any jurisdiction over the road. The only the yeah. Then the Wentworth family, when they built their, their road, for their facility, Greenview, here in town, yep. that was overseen by the state. Why? No, no that was overseen by the state. The state made many, many visits. Because they had jurisdiction <coughs> under alteration of terrain? No, 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 no. You, you were involved. Were you, did you do that project? Yeah. But the state didn't inspect the road. No, they, they, did. they may have done wetland inspection. They do wetlands. They do the alteration towns, of terrain. The, the town's so inspector, definitely. I think it was civil consultants, probably oversaw the uh, construction right. of the road. The state had nothing to do with the road. Yeah. I, town road. And I'm not even sure. I, I think this. I think the town's. So we're, so we're looking at a class five road that's 24 feet wide. Is that? Did I hear that correctly? Yes. I thought roads are supposed to be 50 feet. No, no, no. The right, the, the, the right of way, the the, the 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 land, which is what they have shown on the plan. Right. Has to be, has yeah, to he'd be have to donate feet. some of his. He, and he already has. Road. He already has. He's, he's donating okay. 10 feet of it from the whole length of Shady Lane. <clears throat> Not necessarily. He doesn't necessarily need to do that, but he needed to do at least 200 feet on the new lot. So, but he did it the whole way of Shady Lane. Um, so it would be a 50 foot road. 50 foot right away with 24 feet of pavement in the middle of it. Why, why, did, why wouldn't he just pave the whole thing? Correctly. No, well, you can't pave 50 feet. To, yeah, there's not a road around here that's 50 feet <coughs> wide. There isn't. Uh, maybe 95. I mean, I, I don't. No. Um, the typical town road is. Yeah. Uh, <coughs> um, I don't know. Chimbers. Yeah, which is. Uh, it was 22. 22. 22 curb to curb. Pavement, yeah. That was curb to curb, 22 feet, and that that's got 15 houses on it. I can't remember. Yeah. Um, so no, no, and you couldn't physically. You, there needs to be drainage and stuff to the, on the side of the road. So there's no room for a 50-foot road. Right. Mr. Hamlin. No, they answered my question. Okay. Any other comments? I would just like to follow up um, that the Chinbark property. Um, has a smaller road because the neighborhood insisted on them putting in sidewalks, so the road is not as wide as a normal road. And I had another question: is if and this might be more directed towards Mike, the town um, just recently passed the 
600 feet on a road, does, if this road comes up to new specs, does that extend the 600 feet further? Or is it class five road? road. Plus, plus, plus six road, road, so sorry. No, we're not. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? Don't see anybody. All right. <clears throat> you guys have the info. Yep, yes. there's no rush. Oh, yes. At this point, we're going to close the, 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 the meeting for public comment. It's going to be widened to a 24 foot wide paved surface, um, it's possible. Okay. With, the, with the proposed upgrade to a, an 18 foot wide gravel surface, it, it would not require any impact to that. Right. So. surface all the way up to one. Um, you have to go 600 feet. 200 feet. Yeah, 200 feet into the new lot. So it's right. about 645 feet or 600 feet. Oh, I guess do we have um, their wetlands impact now you're suggesting, John? Well, if you look right at the new lot, I they were avoiding it before. Um, here you go. I've got the receiver here. That's I think that, that goes in the new right away. So it's pretty clear there's going to be a lot the end here as well. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't know. They're, they have quite a bit of frontage here, 282 feet of frontage. They don't need. We don't need to pave the whole thing. You don't really need to build the whole. They need 200 feet of frontage, is what they need. Um, so they, I don't think the welding on the end would be impacted at all. It's just this one here. And what would that impact be? Pave it. Well, it's, they're not paved. Well, they're going to they're going to you know they're going to muck it up. They're going to you know uh, fill it with you know whatever pseudo material is you know crushed stone, crushed gravel, and then and then paint on top of it. So it's, you know, I mean, is there an impact? Sure. Anytime you fill a well, there is an impact. It doesn't seem like I don't know what it, what I don't know how high on value it is. It seems like it's a pretty isolated thing on the side of a of a, of a road. So. You know, that's a that's something that the, you know the conservation commission will weigh in on or the or the D, or DES. I, you know, but there's there's an impact. I, I wouldn't. I, I I guess I was suggesting that it's not it's not a major impact. Stuff like that happens all the time. Paul, I'm just trying to think of what you know between the paved pavement, wetland fill. Is it, I know you guys want to try to you want to reconfigure this plan to have a town road, but is there a way to restructure this so you can giving you the opportunity to try to get a variance, or do you just not? Is that off the table? I don't think I need one. No, I I I would like the alternative. I mean, it's a lot cheaper. I, I'd like the bucks to go to the CPA. Than if you're gonna if you're gonna pass something, I'd like it in the alternative that he can get a variant. He can try for a variance, but we got to bring this to a conclusion so that if you can't get the variance, you can use the alternative. That's fine. Okay. I, I got no, yeah, I'm just trying to, Yeah, you know, no, I agree. Thank you. Because I just, Jason, I see this is, you know, this is not a cheap road. road. You've got to fill this well, which means a permit. 
you know, more, you know, another shift to the conservation. But I think the conservation commission weighs in on these. So yeah, it's not a slim so not a generic. I think it can be accepted as a gravel road. Right. Well, that, that, that would be the best. If you could give it to us, if you would consider approving it in the alternative, either get the variance or build the uh, asphalt the road, uh, that would be appreciative because we've been doing it. He's been here now two years. No one's fault. We're trying to get this thing done so that we can go in the spring. I don't think that's a bad alternative. <clears throat> it's a great alternative. I can just throw out one thing that I've been pondering, and I, I think maybe you're, we're heading in that direction. Um, I don't want to a wrench into the gears here at all, but uh, um, there, there's no compelling need for the surfaced pavement to be 24 feet, other than the fact that it says 24 feet in the town specs. I would agree. Um, would the board entertain a waiver? Those are the board members. The, board I, I, the only thing I will tell you, Paul, is that the board has entertained waivers before. And it's met some resistance by the emergency service. Board. Okay. To, to our surprise. But that, and I think Schinberg may have been one of those. And the, the other one was Claude Clement Road. Claude Cagman. Yeah. Cagman Road. You know, we wanted a narrow road, and the, the fire chief said no. That's only 14 feet, though. I'll, uh, I'll withdraw. But no, I'm not. I'm no, not, no, I'll, I'll withdraw. I, I think this board is supportive uh, of a narrow road, and to pave a 24 foot road for three houses is ridiculous. Yeah. Uh, but I, you know, it's, it's not. This board would probably, I would assume they would, again, I don't, shouldn't be doing all speaking here, but this board would probably ask for the input of the fire chief, and we have not had great success getting him to, you know, agree to an error road. Okay, because it, it's ridiculous. I understand. What about the policy that the select board just put into place that spells out exactly what the road should be? That's the diary. The diary, diary and all this? I mean, the issuance of a building permit. So you know, might have the issuance of a building permit. And it's still classified as a six plus, plus six road. So, so, so yes, yeah, so if this lot was, if this lot existed today as a back lot, you know, the way it is, and you went to get a building permit, that would, those would apply. Um, I mean, I think that you could make a, a, an argument to the Zoning Board of Adjustment that, hey, look, at, you know, the, the selectmen have, 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 have these guidelines. Can we, can we agree to a lesser standard road or something, but that's that's not, I don't think it's our, it's, it's, I don't think it's in the planning board's uh, ability to approve it unless it's a town road. So I, I think the choice that you have is, um, what's that? A class, built to class five town standards, I'm sorry. Um, okay, the, the proposed base that we show on the second sheet of the submitted plans Six inches of crushed gravel over 12 inches of bank run gravel, all to state spec, all over a geotechnical fabric, meets the base structure criteria. Same as the town standard. Same as the town yeah. standard. Okay. Exactly. So it's, it's just width and it's pavement. It's just width and the pavement. Yeah. Exactly. I have just a follow up question. You're not paving the entire front of the additional back lot or, 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 raising, to, ra or raising to standards or changing <clears throat> the surface. But there is a natural <clears throat> curb cut, so to speak, for lack of a better term, to that back area, right? There's a natural formation of the land for accessing it. And where you're su suggesting to build the road to other standards, it, it, it exceeds that natural entry to that back lot? If need be, yeah. We're actually we're actually proposing the driveway into lot. So you would go past the the the. Uh, so we're we're proposing that driveway driveway right where the existing okay. cut is. Okay. So we're we're, we're not changing doing. the cut that's been there for centuries, or right? That's that's sort of the way it's always been accessed. John, yeah. I have a question for you. The, a gravel road in the town of Rollinsburg cannot be accepted as a sure. It can be. Absolutely. I mean, if you can convince voters to do it, I mean, it's, I, I was a selectman in many, for many years in another town, and so, voters. So I sure. Back to. I don't know if they would. I mean, I don't live here, so I don't. Well, know. I'm going to ask. What would what would the variance be needed for? Then, I guess is what I'm asking. If we're agreeing that it can be gravel, then what do we really need the variance for? For two things. One is that you're taking away funds from a non-conforming lot right here. But we already. I, 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 I'm just 
They wait up. Well, no. I, I, the, our, our attorney's opinion is that unless this is built to class five, to, to, to that. town standards. He it says to the, to the right. highest town standards. Is what he says. Right. So I guess can the highest town standards be valid? It's a question I think that the board needs. You know, uh, the, the, the well to whoever. The well, the question. I mean, that that that's why I would I, I literally would love I just I'm begging you to try to get a variance so this is, issue goes away. But I don't know I I don't know if the zoning board grants variances like these. I don't know if they've ever experienced anything like these this before. It's a unique situation. Um, Right, I agree. For for two hundred bucks, you can roll the dice and see what they give you. Um, right. Um, so we, 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 so I agree. Just exactly what he just said. Because I, you know, um, it, it, then everything goes away. The the, the crux of what I'm, I'm seeing and hearing here is indeed, um, it seems as though you you've done every enhancement to the land to make it uh, as conforming as it can be to the situation. And ultimately, what I'm hearing that you're asking for is either give me, you know, approve all the other stuff. What I'm really, because currently as it sits right now, just to summarize, the land, the road doesn't meet standards that you can build on. And um, that would, we, we know that, or so they say, if this was approved other than the very, you know, under the condition thereof, because an approval is absolutely nothing you meet, unless you meet the condition. So we all understand that. The condition would either be get a variance so that this falls into the guidelines as need be, gravel or not, in, in width. Um, that's, that's plan A. Or plan B is um, get the, the opinion of the town to recognize this road as it sits. Therefore, you have satisfied the other plan of your conditional approval, and the rest of your paperwork is in line with you know, whatever engineering plan you need to further go for building and whatnot. But the crook really seems to be the road. <coughs> Great area that doesn't meet standards, and you're willing to make it meet standards, I think that's another opinion we need. But if you're asking for an approval under those conditions, I think that could be a path that we could be discussed at this meeting here now. Like, you lost me halfway through. <laughs> I, mean, I, 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 I agree with you. Make, make I the agree town with accept the road as is, through, or... So. Make the town agree to a lot, or make the zoning board of adjustment, or whatever board that needs to be to make the variance that so needs to be. That's the, the application could be approved on, the, on, the, on in my mind, on the following conditions: that you get a variance from the, the ZBA, or to be allowed to build on a class six road, and um, uh, variance on, on, on road frontage on, on a class five road, or 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 or, right, or, or, or built to. Well, let me interrupt though. Or the zoning board could say. We disagree with the town attorney. We don't think a variance is required, and then I think that it wipes that out. So that's the other option. Yeah. Well, we're not trying to stand in anyone's no, way here. We're just no, but I, want, I just wanted to follow the for point. A path right. of we, 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 let's just say they take that they, and I didn't mean to interrupt. Mike. Mike was going to say, or the alternative was to build this to town standards. And yeah, right. But my 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 point is that let's just say they go to the zoning board and they and they apply for the two variances suggested that they're required to have in the letter from John Redding. They go to the zoning board, the zoning board says, we disagree. Our interpretation of the ordinance is different. We don't think you need it. They're going to be, they're the ones that are going to say yay or nay. If they say, we don't think you need to be here, or maybe you need one and not the other, they grant it or they deny it, then, then, we, then th that changes the game. So, I think that's sort of where we're at. Either build this to town standard, be, build this you know, a minimum of 200 feet in front of it on this lot, and the rest of the way to town standards, or get the two variances suggested in the letter from the town attorney. We're, we're amenable to conditions exactly as such. Or would you be amenable to a continuance, or do you want this? <coughs> I, I mean, I, I'd, be, I'd be more comfortable continuing until you dealt with the ZBA. That way, we'd know where we're going. Because there's other things here, Paul, like the, like the like the wetland fill that we don't know about. That you know, this is the first time we've discussed it because we didn't know there was going to be a town road. I don't know how it lays out in there. I haven't even looked at it, nor is a town engineer. I don't know if a town engineer would look at it, but it, I mean, I'm not. And I'm not trying to slow this thing down. I, in fact, I'd, I want it done. Um, but I, it, there's a lot to sort of digest. You just threw the town roads out tonight, that, and I and I haven't really given it any thought or, or looked at it. It I don't. It's not going to slow, uh, unless you're 100% convinced you're going to build a town road. Then we'll, then we can act on it. But I. 
if you think you're going to try to get a variance, I'd rather continue this until you... I think we're, you're asking for us to get more variances than we need, though. I thought the variance was for the road either being gravel or paved. No, there's two variances required. One is for the reduced frontage, and then the other is for the for the, the lack of the lack of frontage on this lot. So there's two frontage. I disagree with the frontage. We have the frontage. Okay. Well, um, I, I think the applicants would entertain an approval conditioned upon the construction of 640 feet of Shady Lane to town subdivision standards, 24 feet of pavement, and the subsurface as we've already set forth. And should we need to, um, you know, if it comes to be we need to uh, have a wetland impact or what have you, um, we, can, we can address that at, at an appropriate time. Um, but uh, I think to wrap a, a ball around this, um, if that's possible, we're, we're, um, we, we, we would be happy to walk away with that. And I, I think if we wanted to ask the zoning board to vary that, I guess we could. The, I hate to use them as a, as a super planning board, if you will. It's really necessarily fair, but... Um, if that road's built to town standards, so the town would have to accept it. No, no, no. No, it has to go through the process. Um, has to be uh, put on the warrant, and then town meeting has to uh, you have to go to town meeting make the case. Has to well, vote it out. Right. And I know has has the town gone to SB two? Okay. Um, so it's still uh, Norman Rockwell. I think it would show a lot of good faith if you gave conditional approval upon the two conditions. And you bring it up to, even though they're not, the town's not going to accept it as a class five road, but certainly the conditions will be a class five road. And either do that or give them the alternative to go to the uh, zoning board and get a variance or try to get a variance. I can tell you right now, he has not really know in his own mind what he wants to do. And I, I think that it would be beneficial to everyone involved here. After considering how long we've been doing this on, on this issue, this non subdivision, that I would like the, the board to vote up or down on uh, their request here. And you can make those conditions and give them the alternative. I, I agree uh, with the consultant who, and your advisor who says that um, it seems kind of foolish to build that asphalted road for two houses, but if it has to be, it has to be. And so uh, it's a big price to pay, and I agree with that as well. But that's a decision I think my clients have to make for themselves. They're going to need time to talk about it, and if we get clarity and give direction for everyone involved here, exactly what they have to do if they want to subdivide their lot. And I'll also give them a free shot to talk to the uh, Zoning Board of Adjustment for a Variance, because I also disagree with the attorney's letter. I think it's way off base, and I can have my fun with that at a later date. And those conditions for them can be placed on the plan prior to any signature. Okay. So I think we have the options in front of us. Um, approve unconditionally, approve with a condition, or deny. Or continue, but they don't. Or, want, they don't want to continue. continue so that, that, that's right. impalpable. <clears throat> I would. I would leave it. Um, entertain a motion for any of those options. If I was to make a motion for approving of the conditions, I'd like to hear once again exactly what the conditions would be. And it's tough to approve without seeing them like in writing, but yeah. I, mean, I understand what the conditions are, and, and I'm not here to stand in anyone's way. And um, if indeed, whether it has been past history or not, of ever a town, or if there's any special permissions that need to be given by the town where, for one of its roads to be upgraded, I don't know, and that's not my area to know. 
but um, if if a if this subdivision was allowable on on this road, if this road was seen as a standard town road, and if truly the, the issue at hand is the road, um, and there's options of addressing specifically bringing up to or seeking variance, but that's really their decision. Um, the plan as a whole, taking the road aside, I really don't have a problem with, um, and the issues that, not personally, but the issues that are of concern in this plan are addressed specifically within the conditions of approval, the uh, condition of approval. Um, I'd be interested in hearing that again. John's writing out some. I'm just afraid, yeah, I'm just afraid to make any motion without yeah, knowing. No, we should be crystal clear with um, what we're voting what on. Here. Yeah. Right. So so the, and, and to have input from everyone concerned exactly how those are worded so there's no miscommunication above the action that's being taken tonight so that everybody hears the exact same wording um, that's exactly going to be on any motion. Here are the conditions that I have. Number one. The machine lane shall be upgraded uh, to the class 5 <coughs> road standards um, for a minimum of 200 feet into the new lot. So I think it's around 645 feet. You got that? Condition number one. Condition number one. Yeah. Or option number one. So it's not 600 feet. It's around 645 feet. Plus or minus. The more the, the bit the more important number is 200 feet into the new lot. Yeah. That. Number two, Paul, we haven't discussed this because it hasn't come up, but the underground utilities are required to have a back lot. That's a requirement of subdivision. You didn't ask for a waiver, but and that's what's shown on the typical detail. Okay. Good. So on the on, all, all, all utilities would be underground for the new lot. Number three, <clears throat> all state permits are required, including. Uh, dredge and fill permit, and including but not limited to a dredge and fill permit. If, if applicable. If applicable. Number four, town engineer to review the road construction plans and oversee construction inspection at the Board of Selectmen's direction. Mm -hmm. They oversee it, not us. Where am I? Number five? Yep. Mm -hmm. A certificate of monumentation. Is required for the back lot, just showing the, the, the bounds have been set. Stamped by a licensed land survey. And then the final one is <clears throat> surety for the road construction to be determined by the Board of Selectmen. Maybe they can do something where no building permit is issued until the road is built or completed or something like that. I, you know, however the selectmen work it out. That's what I think. Or, 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 bond or, 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 the, uh, or go to the Board of Variance. variance. You said nothing about seeking a... Uh, oh, right, right, right. Uh, and my final one is that... I thought that uh, was going to be an option. Uh, I'm just trying to think how to work yeah. this. Um, the applicant reserves the right to... Seek a variance. Seek a variance for... And I don't have the letter, but there are two... The, the two variances noted in that letter. You can say that. In, yes. in, the, in the letter from the town attorney. From the town attorney. And uh, they, uh, typically when we when we are asking to construct a new road, you have to, you have, to have a bond. So basically, if you if you don't finish it, if it's not built to actually to the specs, it's supposed to be, we keep the money. So you can't. It's typically for, for larger projects so that the developer. But the law says you can build or bond. So you can, right. you can so build the road and then not right. build until you it's done. So right. You have to come, right. If, that's, if, that's not that's out of our that's, for, that's review. Good. It's the board of selection. But I just want to make you aware of it. That some <coughs> some sort of surety, whether it, that you don't build on the lot until the road's done, is going to be required. Is, is that? that? That's everything I heard. You can have this. You can read it. Yeah. I was writing it myself, not you. Okay. Well, we, yeah. okay. we prepared to make a yeah. motion. Do you, you, you have a state septic approval? You have state septic approval. You have state septic approval. I'm sorry. Yeah. It is, it's yeah, already shown. Right, 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 right. Okay, I'm sorry. It's been a while. <coughs> is there any other input from any other parties concerning or any other wording? Uh, 
everyone everyone here heard what you had said. And I don't know if there's any other input or we're all in if that truly answers we're the question yeah. that we're yes, looking we're at. Yes, we're all in agreement. So awesome. that's clear. It's all right. Very well. I think Mike's going to do a motion over there. Uh-oh. Okay. Yeah, Kevin's the motion. Do you want to read off the, the list of conditions? I, I, okay. I'm just going to reference it. Okay. You have it all set, right? Six conditions? Yeah. So it's shady lane should be upgraded, upgraded to class 5 road standards for a minimum of 645 feet, plus or minus 200 feet into the lot. All underground utilities for new lot. All state permit. It's required between good and fill. If applicable, but not limited to. Yep. Town engineer review road construction plans and inspections, certificate of monumentation, surety of road construction to be determined by the select board. Applicant reserves the right to seek variance for the two variances in the letter from the town attorney. So six conditions. Okay. I'd be willing to make a motion to make, give a condition of approval based on. Uh, what, what I want to say though is if they get the variances, a lot of those go away. Right. Yeah. Do we need to reference which ones go away? Yeah. So, Paul, the obviously condition, and I, I, I think it's understood, but we should make it clear. The condition, if, if the variances are granted, condition one goes away. Condition. Simplify it. If variances are granted, construction standards go in accord with the recently adopted municipal guidelines. That's between you and the board. Uh, yeah, sure. I, yeah, I, but yeah. Um, but there, there are specs in place, right? That's fine. Sure. Uh, I guess that's fine. Or, or is that what's in the plan? No, but well, we, we, he can't get a building permit unless it's upgraded in accordance with the guidelines. Okay. It's still going to remain class uh, class six road, right. but it's been brought up to class. That's class you want. You think that's important to put in there? Or not? No, I don't. No, no. So it's 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 redundant. Okay. Do it. Okay. Cool. All right. Sorry. Does that make sense? Okay. <clears throat> we have a motion on the floor here to accept to approve this permit uh, application. Sorry, with uh, condition one through seven. Do I hear a second? Second. Okay. All in favor. Aye. Aye. All right. You're approved conditionally. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thea. Yeah. So All right. Next, next up. Can I ask you for those conditions to, to my email address? Sure. Um, what was the I don't think it's seven. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 Sorry, um, I'm gonna, we're going to take a short, short recess. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Um, I think tonight we're looking at the lighting plan. No, no. unfortunately, that's. Uh, I mean, I'm not a lighting engineer, so okay. obviously if I, I don't want to blame anybody. But it's, he gave me the photometrics, but he gave them to me on. You have a copy of it mm -hmm. on like. 12 different pages, which is useless to you. He segmented it. Okay. So I asked him to put it on a site plan. Uh, so, but but he says he has to send it to the lighting manufacturer, and of course, you know, I get you. They tell you it's whatever three weeks. So as soon as I get it, I'll get it to you. But um, Jeff, obviously, I want to have it before the next meeting. Can, can we do, can can I just ask? If, can we do one thing? Can you ask Tobin to to give us a plan set with like an existing conditions, a site plan? Lighting and drainage on it, so because we're getting everything piecemeal, it's sort of hard to figure out what's going on. But if we had a plan set where you know, you know there's like three or four pages with you know with, with all the information, because this thing is getting so busy now that if he tries oh, to okay. put photometrics on here, I, you know he can do lighting and landscaping in one plan, and then I think the drainage plan should be part of the plan set. You know, so it's it's going to be existing conditions, proposed conditions, okay. lighting and landscaping on one, and drainage on the other. I think you know unless okay. he thinks there's no, but. Again, just just to keep getting this stuff like a little bit here and a little bit there, it's, right. it's, it's really hard. And so on um, the want the site plan, you want existing condition site. Plan. No, I want well, I, I the first page in the plan said you can have this. This is in my notes. Uh, existing conditions will be one plan. 
The second one is either the, the site plan. So it's going to be what you're doing to it. The third one, I think you can put lighting and landscaping on the same plan. You know, but, but you want all four of these in the same plan. No, no, no. no this is three. four plans. Oh, okay. Four pages. Right, four, four pages. Right, so four I page plans. I think I have existing issues. Well, I don't know. I, I, I'm yeah. just sort of getting everything. Maybe you have a um, right, Yeah. Let's see. I've got the existing condition here real quick. <clears throat> but he doesn't even have lighting done, so. No. Well, he doesn't do lighting. Lighting gets done by the lighting guy. But then he'll put it on the site plan. Okay. So he'll show them the pole locations. I, got I don't know why he can't do it, because. Well, he can do pole locations now, but he can't do the photometric. But he's got the photometrics. Okay. All he's got to do is take then those. Maybe he can. Well, okay. I mean, it's up to him. I, mean, yeah. you know. I, will, I will totally ask him about it. He actually, is, believe it or not, is coming to the next meeting, so I can ask him about that. But, but yeah, if he, if he can do the photometrics, I'll do it. That's existing. It, 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 yeah. So that would be page one, then the site plan would be page two. And, and just give us a, a full size, you know, a full set of plans. With everything on it, so we, you know, okay, because so, we're just like I say, it's sort right. of so I've got existing, I got site plan, the lighting, I and he can do lighting and landscaping in one. I'll do it with the lighting, yeah, totally, and then that. drain, and he's done the drain, yeah. So all I can do is put it together in a plan set, right? So we can look at it. And this is the drainage, he's got yep. the drainage before and after, and I don't sides with the report. And then the other, the other thing is, I don't know what your, what your time frame is, but this probably ought to go to uh. I'm assuming you're gonna, we're going to send this to civil consultants to have them review it. So you might want to hook up with uh, Jay Stevens over there. Okay, um, because I got a color set of these for him. Yeah, you can either hand deliver it I'll or just bring them to him. You know where their office? Yeah. Is. Right, so far. You know where their office is, Jay? Sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So I'll just give him my copy right now, and then uh, mm -hmm. I'll totally do that. Well, yeah. I, no, I would swing over there tomorrow, meet with Jay, and just have, oh. and, and you know, and he may want to. There's other things on here, I'm sorry to be yeah, on the but there's other things on here, like you asked for a waiver for the parking aisles. It's something that I would like to have him, I mean, I have an opinion, but he's an engineer, I think he okay. should look at that. So what I'd like you to do is actually give him this copy of the waivers, totally. and just say, and because and, and, he, he's going to do a complete review of the of the plan set. Okay. Uh, you know, again, I have a perspective from a planner, from a planning side, but he, 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 he's going to know how cars turn in and out. And, I think he should advise the board on whether or not the, the parking layout works. Okay, so, so will he meet with me? Yeah. If you call the office or just stop in. This is Jeff Lee from his office. I'm, so. I'm oh, a okay. civil consultant too. <laughs> um, okay. Yeah. He's just, not our engineer. Yeah. The guy from his okay. office. Um, if you call him, if Jay's not there, you can make an appointment with him. Okay. Meet with him now. Yeah, no, I'm going to be great. But he'll want a copy of all of, no, all the, of everything your training yeah. report. All the plans. And, 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 and I think we really, the board's going to want them to look at the, the parking configuration too. So I would give them, I would give them everything that you have. Okay. The lighting is, you know, I, I don't know if you're going to care about that. We can probably do the handle that ourselves. But okay. the drainage, the site plan, so the waivers, I have, I have bring these everything to them. Three, I don't have the uh, lighting. So if I can the go, lighting and I can go in Don't worry now. about it. I, get, get them the existing conditions, the site plan, the drainage, the okay. waivers. And I think that's enough to get him going. That's fine. And yeah. just, but like, just, just you know, give him a holler and, and see if you can, you know, you can go in there and meet with him and give him, hand deliver everything. Yeah, I don't know how quick he operates, but obviously I'm trying oh, to get everything. Oh, this guy's fast. Is he fast? I think he's first. <laughs> I, <laughs> trust I have no idea what his schedule is, so. But that would be awesome because, yeah, I'm trying to get all this stuff in order for the next meeting, obviously. Um, so, so I don't really need to read this, and if, if I'm going to go over it with Jay, I'm just going to wait. Well, no, I think the, you need it. I think the board, okay. I think I do think the board because the board's gonna have an opinion. Okay, yeah, let me read it because this is all our waivers. If you read the parking table, <coughs> you probably can't on the smaller plan that you got. But um, it says um, obviously there's a change of use plan. That's why we're here. But it says um, uh, let's see, proposed parking is 64 spaces. So we have four handicapped spaces. Um, a waiver is required uh, under Section 4A. So basically, we don't make the parking requirement based on our calculation. If you look at the calculation uh, down on the parking table, it says total parking required 89. So we took the first floor. Uh, we, we, could, we called it retail. I don't have a tenant yet, so I don't know the use, but I'm just trying to stay middle of the road on this stuff. So if you take first floor retail, 
you got 15 spots, second floor retail, 14 spots. Actually, it's highly unlikely that you retail on the second floor. Jeff, yeah, there's a problem with your calculation. Because in the first line, you have one for 200 for retail, and the second, you have one for 400. Well, but that's in the zone. Retail on the second floor? Yeah, second floor retail, they give you Oh, really? Thank yeah, you know, which. Actually, that's why I took that calculation because oh. it's middle of the road. Sure, sure. If you actually take office, it's more restrictive. I would need more parking if I just went straight up office. Yeah. Okay. To tell you the truth, because the building's so large and the space is so open, it'll probably be like a manufacturing mix. Like, for instance, a brew pub, right? If a brew pub goes in there, they're going to be making beer, but they'll have like a little tasting room, right? where a few customers will come in, but mostly they're making stuff because it's a factory. So it's hard for me, but I'm just I'm just going middle of the road because that's an average of 300 square feet, you know, if you take that square footage. And then on the third floor, I showed them my plan that I, I wanted to do office because I thought that was a good use for the third floor. So I did use the 250. And then obviously the, four, the residential is clear. That's two and a half. So if you add up all those based on the use we're proposing, you got 89. So uh, we're proposing 64. So we're obviously under. I mean, and if you look at the site plan and the survey, basically I've pretty much maxed out uh, what I can do for parking. Um, this front part, I've added 12. Uh, these spots are added. Right now, my existing parking is here, so I've added. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I've added eight spots on the front, which aren't there currently, which requires a retaining wall. I have to actually cut into the hill because I'm on a hillside. So for me, that to cut into that hill more than that would be extreme, and, and I think it would detract from the site because then you'd have a giant uh, kind of uh, a really imposing wall right there, which I don't think makes a lot of sense. And then I would lose green space. Um, you know, it, it gets steep right here. So I'm, I'm going to propose to add these spots, which does add a little bit of runoff. But I'm trying to uh, come as close as I can to the parking standards, but not totally obliterate the site with pavement. Because, you know, honestly, like the, the way they're written in most towns, we run into it. It's If you want to meet the parking regs, it looks like Walmart. And... I just think towns need to relook at it. So thank God there's a waiver uh, option because I think using the waiver, we might be able to come up with something that works and doesn't totally diminish, uh, you know, the aesthetics of the site and obviously the, you know, the drainage capability. So if you read the waiver letter, it says, um, please accept this letter as a request for waivers pertaining to the current application before you regarding the property at 17 Main, uh, 710 Main Street, Rollinsford. We're requesting a waiver from Section 4 parking in the site plan regulations stating that first floor retail requires 200 per space, second floor retail requires 400 per space, office requires 250 per space, residential 2.5 per space, uh, 2.5 per unit, sorry. According to the site plan parking table, we would uh, require 89 spaces to be in compliance. We're showing 64. That's 25 less than required. The waiver is requested on the residential parking standards due to the applicant proposing one-bedroom apartments, which would never require more than two spaces, as more than two people would not be occupying the units. Hence, at 19 units times 0.5 leaves 10 spaces left. So I've lopped off 10 spaces by getting a waiver for two um, spaces per um, apartment as opposed to 2.5. The waiver is being uh, requested on the commercial standards due to a shared parking use calculation in which residential tenants wouldn't normally be demanding parking during business days while commercial tenants are using the facility. So we're going to actually try to reduce the parking requirement based on a shared use calculation. Currently the commercial use of the building requires 41 spaces and the lot is providing a total capacity of 64 spaces, leaving a surplus of 23 spaces if no residential tenants are on site during business hours. If half, just as an example, if half of the residential tenants are at site, on site during business hours, that would add 19 full spaces to lot. In parentheses it says uh, 
half of 38 spaces, which would be residential requirement if waiver is granted, dropping requirement from 2.5 to 2. So 41 business spaces plus 19 residential spaces is a total of 60 spaces occupied at full capacity, which is still four under the amount we're providing. So uh, the 64 spaces using our shared use calculation would comply and be more than ample to serve the site. The second waiver being requested also pertains to parking section for the site plan regs, which requires 10 by 20 spaces. That's in your, in your uh, ordinance. On our site plan, we have shown all non-ADA spaces as 9 by 18. So on my plan, the ADA spaces stay in compliance, but we've reduced the other spaces to 9 by 18. Many towns are currently using a 9 by 18 standard due to the diminishing size of vehicles in this era of energy efficiency and conservation. A 10 by 20 requirement would require more pavement to reach the same parking capacity, which only adds to more unwanted runoff and less open space. Because of the size of this old building, making a reasonable attempt to come close to the parking regulations will certainly require some flexibility, and this is one area that an advantage can be gained with a kinder and softer result for all. So obviously we're going for the 9 by 18 standard, which uh, is less than your 10 by 20 requirement. The last, and that's what's shown in the site plan. Now. The last waiver request also pertains to parking section four of the site plan, which probably would be a civil consultant issue. If you look at the site, it's a little choked on the railroad ad entry, and it's also a little choked out here where we've added an extra space. It goes from 24 to 20.7. Um, and that, that's like midway through the back lot between the solar panels and, and the island. And then also as you enter, it's a little choke, but then it opens right up and it's in, in compliance. So I, I don't need to go into that because I, I guess I could talk to civil consultants about that. It's two just points. And then obviously beyond those points, it opens up again. So. Um, Obviously, I don't think we're going to have a lot of traffic, honestly, in the back of this lot. I think most of the traffic will be here at the entrance. But in order to meet the seven and a half foot setback so that we don't need a variance, we've kind of stayed steady on those lines and then working with what we have so that we're in the ordinance as far as the seven and a half foot parking setback. So we ended up with a 21 there. If you wanted me to take out a bunch of spots, I could. I wouldn't need that um, uh, waiver because I could make the 24. But I would probably lose like three. I probably lose three spots here, and I probably lose like another spot out here. So that would be four less spots. So um, I, I would totally entertain that if you guys had, had an issue with that two-way traffic uh, point, but. Trying to kind of like juggle, do a little juggling act here, try to balance it. So you either get more spots, uh, meet the two-way requirement, or you get less spots and, and uh, you, know, you don't. So. <clears throat> so that's what we did to come up with our uh, parking counts, and that's what the waiver letter is about. Okay. <clears throat> But again, I don't have a tenant, so it's kind of arbitrary for me to throw numbers out. If I went with the manufacturing, obviously I'd probably be much closer to not needing a waiver. But I don't want a tenant to come in who wants to do some retail, go down to the town, and then the town says, well, you don't have the park, you know what I mean? Then the tenant has a problem. So I'm kind of trying to stay in the middle of the road. and. Um, but I also don't want to obliterate the site with pavement. Um, so that's kind of where I'm at right now. Okay. Did you have anything else you wanted to cover? Uh, I think tonight was basically parking. Okay. Um, drainage, I don't know if you have any questions on drainage. I probably can't answer them. I do know from reading the report that we did increase the runoff on the front because we had to expand the lot 
on the back, it actually <coughs> reduced it, believe it or not, because of the retention pond and, and then slowing it down here with this. So, so in the back, the calculations show it's a reduction on the front. It is a slight increase because we had to add parking. Um, but other than that, it's, it's very slight. If you read the report, it's uh, under, under 5% or something like that. Well, I don't know what that is actually. I shouldn't answer that because the engineer would probably give you more insight into that. But, <coughs> but uh, I guess civil consultants would have um, you know, to go with that. And they would always call me an engineer or whatever they need to do. Uh, can I just ask a couple of quick questions? Absolutely. Jeff, while you're standing there, yeah. um, did you resolve the property line, not discrepancy, but question? Yeah, Brian brought that up. Yeah. And then I confirmed with him, and then I also talked to the surveyor, and we think it's good. Okay. okay. So yeah. this concrete slab right here? That already is that's on non Brian. Form. That's yeah. on Cutter's property. Okay. Yeah, that's just, I think it's an old coal chute from my boiler. Just a question. In this one story addition, is that there? Now? That's already there, yeah. Okay. Um, and my final question was, you should ask uh, your engineer if you need, I, I don't know what the requirement is for a van accessible space, but you know, you, may, you should make sure you comply with that too. I think he did it when he added the four. So that's van accessible, van accessible. Where do you see that? In the, the front here. Yeah. Where are you seeing van accessible? But because of that oh, alley, right? Isn't yeah, that van accessible? I, I, I think so. I'm not positive. Okay, you should, you should just make a note on there that, you know, Okay. Because I don't know what the standard is, but for so many handicapped, I think you need to have a a uh, van accessible space. You can take this plan. So and I, okay. that was down there. So I'm pretty sure that width is what makes I, it van accessible. I'm sure. And then my final question is, because we're fighting green space and stuff, why do you have 34 feet in the aisle width here? Can you bring that in? I could, but we didn't want to choke. This is existing. So we didn't want to choke that, but I can. I can bring it in. I was just trying to, the less cutting into the hill, the better, you know? Yeah, but, I mean, I would love I, that because I, I don't like a giant wall. Uh, I would be soft. It might be easier to move the driveway over three or four feet and, and bring that wall over, you know? I could totally do that. I just didn't want to get into, like, the town, you know, going crazy when I changed the curb cut or whatever. But, yeah, I could I could totally have them tweak that over. I don't The only thing, the reason I wanted a little more than 24 is because... That's like delivery school. Well, yeah, I'm not telling you what to do. I'm just, I always ask. If, 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 yeah. If it makes sense to pull it over and, and reduce that a little bit, and, you know, I don't, I don't think the planning board would have a problem with it. Yeah, I mean, it would reduce the runoff a little bit, which is good, and it would actually um, um, be okay with me because then the wall doesn't have to be as high. Mm -hmm. you know? But you got to also make sure you deliver vehicles. In there. I'm not sure how it'll be, but it's like. Well, yeah, we erred on the, on the uh, upper side on that just because of the turning and. Um, Deliveries, and I, don't know. I was I was just talking to the neighbors that railroad out like the here railroad out the the, the uh, trucks heat going up there like mm -hmm. got a lot of complaints about it yeah. so but then again you know there's poles here I mean this you know, it's not a great does this road right connect from here to the back lot today it you doesn't this oh it does you can't get through there no okay. Um, at this point, I think we'll solicit any public input, if there is any. Sir? Yep. Uh, upon reviewing Can you all say this, your name and your Steve address? Ballon, 412 Railroad Ave. Thank you. Uh, upon discussing this at home, we have a son who's handicapped. He's uh, permanently in a wheelchair, and he uses Railroad Ave to commute down to the little store there in town all the time. And a concern came up about the fact that if we increase the tra traffic dramatically on Railroad Avenue, there is no sidewalk or way he would be competing with the traffic, which is barely big enough for two cars. Um, and that's something I want to find out if uh, what kind of accommodations can be made or what, how that would uh, impact his plans. There isn't any crosswalk there either, is there? Pardon me? There isn't any crosswalk across the um, railroad over to Maine, is there, across Maine, is there? there? Uh, it's further up by the... Um, right there, it's by the Main Street. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> Which would, if he were to try to go to that route, 
yeah. then he would have to go through the post office parking lot. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm not. Yeah, yeah I don't want yeah. to do that either. We're trying to, yeah. <coughs> there, there is no crosswalk. It, it's yeah. over by <coughs> town. Right by, by, by our front. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Is there space for a sidewalk on railroad road? Island? There's barely enough space for two cars. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 That was and based on the prior discussion about road width and all that. Um, we are both questioning if our road actually meets standards for the road. <laughs> not. Probably not. Okay. okay. It would laid out long before. Uh, no, I, I understand that, so but I wouldn't imagine um, it does. But. Yeah, because that's uh, you know being a resident there, uh, I have a concern about his accessibility. Fourteen yeah. dollars. Yeah. Is there is there is there right? Do you know how wide the right away is or not? Um, you I mean know? here. Yeah. Uh, well, if you had a ruler, it's one well, inch is no over there, though. So, so I don't it know. looks like about 20, 22. Because one inch is 20 feet. So you're, you're so over. Your, go to your existing conditions plan. <coughs> no, I, just, I didn't know if it was another survey. It's about there. 22 feet from my line, <coughs> but then that's a lot less. If, if that's true, I just wonder if there's a 50 foot right away. If there was even oh, room to come in a sidewalk, 50 foot right away would be halfway in my yard. Uh, yeah, I couldn't imagine that. Yeah. Yeah. You, you don't just, think there is? Uh, no. If you put a sidewalk there, there's going to be a lot more people crossing the tracks. There, but, um, yeah. Sidewalk would be nice. It's a narrow right away. If we even have the list, to be honest with you. Well, there's also there a lot of roads in the sure. village that we don't have. Okay, uh, I get it. Yeah, okay. It was just a question. Sidewalk would also. Accommodate the people from your apartments. Yeah, no, it would be nice because everybody walks, even the guys working for me, they walk down my lot and they walk right down wherever right. else. Sure. Everybody goes to the store. Right. So, yeah, I love sidewalks, dude. Yeah. They're awesome. Put an elevated one. Is parking <laughs> permitted on <laughs> a bridge? Railroad side of the Is parking permitted on the side of the show? Railroad currently? The balance would know because they live on it. Right. I don't know. We don't have a sign up there, do we? For what? Posting for for parking on railroad? No. No, not posted, right? No. Nope. So no people. People do, right? Can do. Yeah. I park in the road. I park actually on the gravel part of the road. So if if a that's gonna be a problem. Should do. So, that's that's, yeah, that's, that's not gonna be your problem. That's gonna be. It's gonna come to me eventually. Yeah. Yeah. And when I bought the building, it was occupied. Obviously, that there was forty employees there. Yeah. For years. So Jeff, where are your tenants? The, your residential tenants, where are they, how are they going to get to the store if they want to grab, grab something? Well, they have options. They can walk through the building and come out the front Here. entrance. They can um, walk down this gravel drive, which most of them probably will because they'll come out Okay, here. so there's, there's probably not much of a need for walking traffic this way. No, but everybody that, right now, to tell you the truth, they walk, it's flat, right? Yep. So humans follow flat areas. It's like Disneyland. So they walk here. And then okay. they walk straight to the store. So actually, that you know, they do use that and I predict human behavior. I would say instead of going downstairs, people will stay on flat terrain. Well, there was a, a, a gravel road that you indicated on your plan. Is that going to just end at the side of the building, or is that going to be a passageway to the rear? Yeah, that's just lot? access for the side of the building. Okay. It doesn't go through. Is that an option? Yeah, could that be a road? Yeah, I mean, it could. Uh, it would kill some parking spots, um, you know, here. But I, you know, I, I would think that that would I love reduce the traffic off of the Yeah, railroad. I don't know how, like, people want two points of cars. So I don't know how that works. If people probably want one, like, identified entry instead of having multiple entries. But, um, but it, you know, traffic flow is great. So if you can have a site where you have different options, it's great. I just um, well, Jeff, the I don't know about my handicap. The, the topography through here is not easy. So no, if you were to punch this road through here, yes, you'd lose two spaces, but you might gain it back here. But could you close that access off if you had this one, or is that is that ridiculous? Uh, yeah, no, I don't. I mean, it's pretty steep. Yeah, and then that's not showing pavement, so you might have some issues if you try to pave that because I couldn't. If it's this hill, then I would want to pave it. Sure, sure. It, this is just for like 
maybe one car to get up here and go to the building. What unit is it? 110. Yeah, you'd have an so issue. Uh, with the, you'd have to, to do it right, honestly, you'd have to pave it. And, um, you know. It's steep, though. Yeah, it's, and then I'm thinking, you know, green space is good. Like, I'm kind of doing a lot of paving. So, yeah. Yeah. I'm trying to retain some yeah, green space. Like, sorry, just I know, I'm just trying to figure out a way to sell the. But it makes a nice walkway, honestly. Like, yeah. It makes a nice avenue, to, you know, to walk through. Yeah. But if I could get this from Mick, that would be sweet. Because then it would open up all kinds of, you know, possibilities. But you know, right, right now it's not, not on the table. So. Anyone else? May I? It's still Ilya Full, 426 Washington Street. So I think you showed last time you were here, and I can look at the plan, that somebody. Your neighbor might have a drive or drive. Yeah. Could, is that a, um, something that's been there a long time? Could you put a couple parking spaces in here? Uh, no, drive? they have an easement. So oh, actually this needs to maintain, uh, it needs to be open. It's, it's, they have an easement to travel across it. Or could you put parking on a higher level and then a set of stairs down so you could put more like parking here so that um, like a ramp and parking here and then a set of stairs so that you have more spaces? Yeah, you could add parking here, but it's very steep. So uh, there may be some uh, standards for that. It's not, uh, it's not safe, obviously, to have parking on a slope because it's pretty dramatic. This, you know, to, to create this parking, this is level, so we put a retaining wall in. So the only way, really, you could do this and do it right is move this retaining wall back here and add more parking. But if you, if you uh, factor in the travel width, which is 24 feet, to go back in there, I think you're going to, I can't cross this easement because that's actually a recorded easement. I really don't think you're going to gain anything. You're going to end up with more pavement, more runoff, a giant retaining wall. Um, it's really tough because if you go out there and look at that site, it's a pretty steep hill. So this wall will probably end up being 12 feet, honestly, just by going in 9 feet. I mean, going in uh, 18 feet, we still probably will end up with a 12-foot wall there. So if you, if you try to create parking, <coughs> you'd have to try to level it which would be, mean more retaining walls, more pavement. Um, be very difficult. I mean, I like this option, keeping it green, because I, I could plant trees here or, you know, do additional landscaping. So that it gives me a little more options to have some green space. And the folks to the, to the left of the, of, the, of the gravel, they use that as their driveway, don't they? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, they park there. Yeah, in here. Yeah, so we do, I just drive around them. Yeah. You know, and that's why I like this is not limited use. Yeah. I can't have people right. depending on that. It's, they're going to park their cars there. You right. just drive around them. Right. But if if all my tenants were required to use this, <clears throat> you know, then I get issues with this guy, right. you know, parking there. I think, oh no, it's a single family home. So you can have three cars at the same time. It's a new place. Oh, is it a new place? Oh, it is. Oh, I didn't even know that. I thought it was the same thing. Brian? Yep, Brian Pellerin, Cutter Family Properties. I, part of your uh, I waiver for the parking requirement is predicated on your assumption that the kind of people who are going to rent a one-bedroom apartment are going to work nine to five jobs that won't be in conflict with the retail establishment. I really don't think that's accurate. Half of them. I mean, some some portion of people are going to be childless couples with traditional nine to five jobs, but a significant portion of them are not. They're going to be, for example, the people who work at those retail establishments. Right. Yeah, totally. I, so, you know, some of them, yeah, I don't think in this day and age you can really, uh, I rely on people, especially people with one bedroom apartments, I not using those spots at the same time as a retail establishment. 
mean, it had, it'd be tough enough having a lack of conflict with an industrial use. At least with an industrial use, you've got less density, you've got less people doing more stuff. You start putting in offices and retail into that, and you've really got a lot of people competing for the same spots. And as somebody who has two adjacent parking lots, I can see that being a problem. Oh, totally, yeah. I think if you look at, uh, you're right though, everybody doesn't work the day shift. But if you look at the waiver, if you read the waiver letter, I've, I've actually tabbed it. So I basically said, all right, well, if half of the people work during the day, then my numbers still make it under the 64. So I didn't say, like, everybody, you know, if you read the letter, I didn't use the calculations of everybody, but that's a fair estimate to say 50% of the people probably work 95, 9 to 5. That's conservative because I, I bet mo most people work like that shift. Um, but if you took half and said, all right, half are going to be there during business hours, I'm still in compliance, you know, if the waiver is granted. It also right. assumes every unit has two cars. That's two cars, which a one-bedroom apartment. That's pretty conservative. Might be because, you know, a lot of people now are sharing cars, but uh, that's one of the reasons I'm doing one-bedroom apartments because I didn't want to get into a big scene over there, uh, you know, with a bunch of cars and you know a bunch of people. You know, so I'm trying to. Make It'll be in your lease agreements that they are limited to two spots, or. Uh, yeah, they would probably be allowed to have two spots, and that would be it. Yeah. And Brian, the other justification is that our parking requirements require 2.5 spaces right. per residential unit. It's probably unlikely that someone in a one-bedroom apartment is going to have you know, right. a, a third car every other unit. So, you know, I, I, I think that's a, I think it's a fair, I think it's a, I think it's a reasonable justification for a waiver if they're one-bedroom units. Um, so you may have pulled again. On those lines, is that 0.5 for guests and visitors? Is there any allotment in the parking structure for guests or visitors? For the apartments? Like, I know every year I go spend a couple weekends with my best friend who lives in an apartment complex with 12 units, and they have four to six visitor spaces, and each unit gets two spaces, so they must have, like... 30 parking spots there. So that's, in my mind, I'm thinking you're dropping it from two spaces, which if you have a couple, that's two cars. And then they have company that comes. Somebody comes to spend the night on their couch. Where does that company park their car for the overnight? Yeah, that's why there's overflow. So like if you took, for instance, if half, well, okay, perfect example, overnight. So if a guest comes, generally there it's overnight. That's when the issue might happen. So all those businesses, when you do the shared parking calculation, all those businesses aren't there. All the employees are away. So if you look at the employee spaces, um, well, it's in the letter, but I think it's something like 30, 30-something 30 spaces for the businesses. So that would be your guests or overflow uh, you know, in the evening. Um, so yeah, that would account for it. And again, if you, if you take the shared calculation, We've still have that just to be conservative. So that means, um, you know, you still have a little bit of play even within those figures, because a lot of times people do a shared parking calculation. They say, okay, well, everybody's working nine to five. Well, we've had that, and we still have four surplus spaces. But for overnight guests, um, because people are welcome and they have access to the building from both lots, so. If it was a crazy and crazy night on Friday and everybody was having a party and everybody had guests, you're still going to have an empty lot down here. You know what I mean? So I think the overflow um, will really work with that flexibility if you take... That's why mixed-use buildings are, are kind of wiser development because you have live-work, you have that shifting of use so that at night the residential people are there during the day the business is there. So it really makes the building, uh, evens it out. Um, and I think that 2.5 is a requirement for a dwelling unit. And a dwelling unit could have six bedrooms, eight bedrooms. Uh, so in, in that case, 
you know, an eight bedroom house, not that there's a lot of them, but say a five bedroom house, you're talking that could be four cars. So I think the point five really is there probably to suggest, I didn't write the zoning, but probably to suggest that there could be more than two cars um, typically in a larger dwelling unit. So in my case with a one bedroom, I'm thinking I'm still, I might even be high at two because, uh, you know, nowadays a lot of people share a car. So Maybe not a lot. Along those lines, have you thought about, I know this is um, available at UNH, I've been through there lots of, they reserve a couple of spots for zip cars or a ride share. Have you considered putting in a space allocated for that? Whether it be like a zip car with a special sign that says, here lives a zip car, and somebody who doesn't have a car just like rents that one car. Yeah, that would be awesome. I mean, I think a zip car could park anywhere. You know, like, it's pretty much wide open. But yeah, no, I, I'm all about public transportation or ride sharing. Anything like that would be cool. And with the spaces going from, is it 10 feet wide or 9 feet wide, you're asking? Yeah, I'm asking to reduce it to 9 uh, because the 10 by 20, uh, a lot of towns aren't even using that anymore. It's extreme. It's for like a truck, pickup truck type of thing. Um, all the cars are smaller, more comp compact, and it's just less pavement. I mean, that's the way I look at it. So, um, yeah, I'm asking to reduce it. Well, I have a question, I guess, for the board, and I'm not sure they can answer it, but this um, front street has angled parking. Does the board know if those are 10 feet wide or 9 feet wide? Because I know with me, I have two children, and to open the doors and get my children in and out in a tight space, I'm constantly bumping into other cars. Like I was going to suggest you go and actually look at the, the, the parking spaces on front street. That Ms. Leopold's uh, talking about. Because if they are the same dimension, you might want to yeah. reconsider because they are. Not nine by eighteen, really good. Home. No, I, you know. So I, I, I think I, I, I would, I would doubt they're nine by eighteen. I, I don't see their angle. I think they're uh, small, nine by eighteen is pretty standard. standard. Yeah. That could be setting yourself up for. Yeah, I think does. actually most uh, zone are most um, towns and the uh, angled are less. So usually the angles, um, nine. The park is like the were straight larger the turn former road agent. Yeah, I think the tens last time I think changed them. So, so yeah, yeah. and I'm wondering about door width. And like, when you open a door, how far does it open? To, and right. is are you covered if you are in a nine foot parking space with both doors open? Are you going to be going over into the next parking space? Yeah, well, like I said, the cars are smaller. But you know what? Honestly, I think the ten, I'm not a uh, parking engineer, but I think the ten because when you do slanted spaces, usually they only require nine. And you still got to open your doors, so I think the ten is for turning, actually, so you can get into the space and tee it up, honestly, because usually when we do the slanted, and that's why we do it, uh, we only have to do nine. So I don't know if it's, uh, you know, I'm not a parking engineer, so, I mean, but that's just, uh, you know, my assumption. Brian, I'm wondering where you're getting this idea that cars are getting smaller. <laughs> Uh, just uh, is that, energy is efficiency. That, oh, you've seen all the Priuses out there? Oh, they're definitely getting more efficient. But as of two years ago, trucks and SUVs surpassed cars in sales in the U.S. The overall size of cars uh, has gotten slightly larger in the last 10 years, and it's significantly larger than it was 20 years ago. Efficiency gains are way up, but as far as the physical size of cars, their cars are larger. Yeah, I mean, I can't really comment on that. I'm not, I'm not an auto manufacturer, but I mean, it's just something to just consider. I, you know, it's your parking lot. Uh, I, I have a personal preference against smaller, tighter spots, but that's no reason for you not to put them in. I was just curious if you had any actual source for this idea that cars are smaller. Uh, that just seems to be the direction. The only reason I, I uh, we brought it up and we uh, proposed this is most towns are going in this direction. So it just it's an ordinance that they found is a little outdated based on what they're seeing. Um, so that's why we proposed it because it's all it, it seems to be ample. Uh, nobody complains with the nine foot about doors hitting 
uh, other cars or you know navigation issues or things like that. So with a 24 foot um, lane, there's plenty of room to turn. Um, it might so be it's best just to have our town engineer review so we could be here all night talking yeah. about yeah. <laughs> So I agree. Any other comments? Not about parking. Parking was yes. Yeah. I was hoping we could change gears for a second and you could go over the uh, drainage. I don't think we're going to cover that tonight okay. um, since his engineer's not here. Thank you. <clears throat> you said it's 24 feet. Nope. Let's we're not see. down to Iowa Park anymore. Okay, Lots sorry. Size yeah. anyway. sorry. <clears throat> Anyone else? We're going to close off public discussion. And I think, oh, yes, we're going to yeah. we're going to continue this in December. Are you going to... You're going to be ready to come back in December. Yep. Yeah, I'm going to try to get all Sorry, Celia. So we leave you. Oh, 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 yes. I'm sorry. We're going to, we're going to continue the public hearing um, until December. Um, all right. Um, computer died. And make sure the J is aware that the meeting yeah. is. Uh, yeah. Do we? Uh, do we need a motion? Yeah. So it would be nice to have his yeah. comments before that. I'm sure he can probably. Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah, and okay. um, <coughs> then we'll have plans. Preliminary consult on Phil Ramsey. Do we have a preliminary consult? And I just over here. Okay. Well, thanks so much. Um, yeah. Mr. Terry, assume we have. Sure. Cool. My name is Jeff Oliva. I'm an engineer with Civil Consultants. Yep. Yeah. And my first name is Jeff with G. It's G E O F F. And my last name is A L E V A. So, what I've got, and I'm looking for some guidance from the town and uh, the board, is that um, the Terriums. Um, live at 427 Silver Street, and it's surrounded back um, on all three sides by the uh, cemetery. And the lot that they have is 1.34 acres in size, um, serviced by municipal water. And what they would like to do would be to have and add a dwelling unit, another single family home out in the back, out here for them to uh, build a new house for themselves out here and keep this house up front and not do it with the subdivision. Um, looking through the ordinance regulations, it looks like um, a duplex is possible, but the way the ordinance is written, it, it, and I'm looking for guidance here, it kind of indicates that the building kept, that a duplex has to be in one building. And I'm wondering where the justification comes from that as to, as to looking at why that is the case um, when there's the, when the zoning is kind of lot lot area and land area that way, um, because that those the, and, it's, and I kind of went through a couple of the, the different sections of the ordinance or, to look through the and especially section eight which talks about special provisions and talks about um, uh, dwellings two family dwellings and multiple family dwellings, um, but and then you look at the definitions and it talks really it says you know in the same unit. We're in the urban residential zone that is there to promote a density. A density. And um, just, it, it's a little unique. I, I, granted, I don't do a lot here in Rollinsford, um, but it's unique that it's not allowed to have a, an individual unit in, in a density aspect of it like this, as, as other towns do. But that doesn't mean anything. But um, I'm just looking for what the what you folks have found in the past, or have looked in the past, uh, for a lot area that you know, a lot that you know it's a bigger lot. The minimum lot size zoning in, in this area is 15,000 square feet. This lot is 58,000 square feet. And what we're looking to do is just is add one dwelling, an additional dwelling unit to have two dwelling units. So freestanding building. Freestanding building. Um, What's their opposition to a subdivision? Well, I think it, the way it looks here is that if I look at where. Uh, I, I would want to, the minimum front would be 100 feet. And if I, I, I and, can't see it. Yeah, okay, you have for frontage? I've got two, 250 for front. Is that a house? That's a house. Oh, so you don't have Yeah, and here's, a, and here's a garage. So I'd have to go, if I go 100 feet, I'm out to here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm running right through the garage. If I come out over here, then I'm going to create a situation where this house is not conforming. But it, it's, it appears to me if I go, 
into the ordinance and I build a little tiny connector, I could build a house here, right. and it, it just doesn't it doesn't make sense. I don't know if it's if it's something that we need to go to that you go to the zoning board to get a, a variance or a waiver for from that aspect and then come back to you folks. Because clearly it has to come if back to the board. You get a variance, you don't have to come to us. Yeah. Oh, I don't. Well, okay. Well, it'd be a condo. I mean, that's yeah. how you could do it. With, you know, yeah. You can record a condo document without coming to us. Without coming to you folks. If yeah. you got a variance to put a second unit on it and you wouldn't come to us, okay. then it's not a subdivision. That's not a subdivision. Yeah. But I don't think we can. Uh, it, it is. It, it's not. We're not the only town. Uh, no, I know. It's a yeah. weird thing. Yeah. And I've seen duplexes con connected by a thirty-foot wall underground. Yeah. It's ridiculous. Yeah. You, you can uh, stretch but, it. Uh, they, right. They could build a forty. I suppose they could build a long concrete wall underground. The reality is they got to think about resale. You know. Yeah. It, uh, that's stupid. No one's gonna want that. So I think the best. What way if it's meant to be kept in the family? What's that? What if it's meant to be kept in the family? I mean, because we, we did a little concept that, that basically showed, you know, that, that everything would stay here and the house would be positioned back in this corner, meeting meeting the, the, you know, all the requirements for setback and, you know, all that aspect for, for lot density. I'm just, I'm just, you know, I want to kind of, if we didn't have to go through a subdivision which would involve relocating or tearing down the garage to, to to yeah, you don't want to do that. Yeah. I, I guess, you know, I mean, I, I, you might be wise to talk to Tom Clark and say, you know, what kind of a connection do I need to, to call this a, a duplex, you know? Um, a variance might be easier, though. Oh, okay. <laughs> you know? yeah. I, I don't know why we have unique situations. It'd be cleaner, yeah. too, with a variance. It'd, it'd be cleaner. Really I mean, yeah. I think it'd be cleaner just to get a variance. I mean, just it because certainly looks like you have now, ample land more appealing, and ample frontage, yeah, but to, 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 to contrive something is sort of stupid. It, 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 exactly. And that's why and, I want to come to the board. We could do a little connector yeah, and be like, this doesn't like, count what they want. And, yeah, and I know you don't want to keep it in the family, but what if you want to sell it? And then it's weird. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I would rather see you try to get a variance. You know, and then whether you do it by a condominium, you know, just condominiumize yep. it or just have a second unit on there and deal with condo later. Yep. yep. You get a variance, the planning board has nothing to do with it. Okay. I think that's some of the most reasonable. Unless you want to do a town road. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Pave the, the cemetery. Yeah. No, we're good. Whatever we got to do, listen, I want to build the house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think, very very easy. Easy. I think, I think it's really easy and cheap. Um, yeah. I mean, I don't know if it's easy, but it, it's. Yeah. You'll find out very quickly whether or not you get it. You, get, you have yeah. ample land. Yeah. That's what we're hoping. We have more than what we need. Yeah, absolutely. By a lot, you know. Yeah. So. Yeah, and, and trying to position it, you know, back on the property, it makes it makes the whole property a lot nicer. I know. It, I know. Do, it doesn't make it look all and confined I, and, and constricted. It sounds like they're just trying to, you know, turn everybody to the zoning board tonight. That's not how we know. Well, no, there, no, are, no, there, there are other uh, properties. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. So the idea is, is to see the code office and talk to them and, and, and try to work at that and see the, that's the process to go through the zoning board. Oh, no, or no, talk no. to Sarah. That or might be the easier okay. way. And okay. Just schedule a, 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 you know, a variance. Yeah. Okay. If you don't want to go to the ZBA route, you would talk to code enforcement yeah. and figure out what sort of. But I think he's going to make it connect with two buildings. Yeah, I think yeah, that's yeah. Good. and that's something we want. I think it's the idea is to look at a variance and, and work it that way. Okay. That's what I would do. You yeah. can email me through the town website. Okay, that's what My last name is how to spell. Okay. I can do that. Just like this. Yeah. Perfect. That's what we'll do. That makes the most sense. Yeah. Well, I think it's the cleanest. You know? I think it's the cleanest. Yeah, I mean, for for a, for a, and it's a unique situation because this right. is not your typical lot size that's down in that in the right. in the, the the village area. A lot of them are much smaller, very minimal frontage yeah. on that. This is a, a unique property that's surrounded by the by the, by the cemetery that has two hundred. We have a lot of unique shaped lots in the village. Oh I yeah, say that. yeah. <laughs> yeah. So this one's blessed because it has size to it. Yeah, for sure. How soon are you looking to build? I was hoping to be in there for Thanksgiving. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's not going to happen. Oh, oh, year. Year. <laughs> yeah. We would like to start as soon as possible. We have our um, 
middle son and his wife and two grandkids living with us. So, uh, so, <laughs> so uh, that's our, our plan is to let them stay in our house and we're going to then move out right. and have another home. Um, and like you said, it, it's we want to keep it. It's his family. I'm no, sorry, I but I want to keep it in. I definitely want sure. to keep it. No, I, I but if and when you do home. sell it, it's got to have some sort of. You know, that's why. That's why. Exactly. I'm sorry. Are you going to be able to start it this winter? Do you find that Obviously, I mean, right now we've been blessed with this weather. Yeah. But. We're in New England. We're going to get frost. Yeah. I, I probably won't start this now till spring, okay. to be quite honest. I'm just asking this to try to, to see how fast mm -hmm. it gets you into the ZBA. Okay. okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. Because it is, the holidays are coming up. Right. Okay. Kind of complicated. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Get it warm. Yeah. So, okay. It, yeah, at least so we can know what time. direction yeah. we're going to... Thanks for coming in. So, John had some changes. So, um, well, I've never experienced having to do changes. So, do I need to make the changes before we approve? Um, we'd vote to approve with the changes. Okay. Yeah. So, what are the changes? So, so the change was something up tonight. Um, it was basically like the description of how he recused himself for the last. So, time. okay. The, the issue was. The proposed minutes said, I recuse myself. A recusal implies a conflict of interest. Instead, I abstain. Okay. As you did tonight. As I did tonight. No, I think, yeah. I think you're wrong. You think I'm wrong? Well, I, because abstaining would be abstaining from the vote. I think you're recusing, you're recusing yourself from, from, from taking part in the discussion and the voting. Okay, well, that's, that's what I, that's what I, I mean, that's what I, I mean. You, you recused yourself on the basis that it might come before another board you board. sit on, is how I was I interpreted. I would have seen would mean, I'm just, you Yeah, know, you, you would have participated in the conversation. And the vote, and then, you know, however the vote, <clears throat> when, when, the, when, the, when the vote was taken, or a vote, you know. But he didn't participate in the conversation, no, he and he is a resident, so he has the right to sit at the table and listen. So I think that he can abstain, but I think it's also safe sometimes to recuse so that you there can be no claim. I don't remember. I don't remember you talking. I don't remember. You, no, he didn't. You said there, didn't say word. I didn't say word. No, no, he did not participate. So he would refuse. Well, I mean, maybe it doesn't. Maybe I'm thinking. Whatever maybe I'm word thinking, thinking, I think whatever you're comfortable. We all, whatever you're comfortable with, but I think I, a recusal is more. You went beyond abstaining. You actually you didn't okay. At all. So, so, okay, that's fine. But, but if you recuse, you can't be accused of bias in any sense. Okay. You have recused. If you abstain, yeah. it could be say you perhaps put influence on people and then didn't vote. And then didn't vote. To recuse is the safest. Yeah. Way okay, sure. So to I'll, I'll yourself yeah. without bias, without yeah. prejudice. I think you're better off with that. Yeah, yeah. I think this makes sense. Okay. All right. He that's recused fine. himself, and then at the bottom it says when the vote was taken that. Um, it was approved, the motion was approved with Mr. Hayden's been uh, abstained. Yeah, I think great makes sense. All right, great, great, it's fine. I appreciate your concern. <laughs> and I didn't put in the part about them waiving it because sure, that's they fine. don't have the authority. That's fine. Really, yeah, that's fine. That's fine. No, that's fine. Was there a second change or no? I've, I, I've withdrawn it. Okay, okay, so we'll just go with that. Okay, so September. I'll make the movement, the motion to. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor of approving aye, September's aye. minutes? Aye. 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 The ayes have it. Um, October's aye. meeting aye. minutes? You, you, you didn't really have a change in just that part? Aye. Actually, I think based on what you said, I think there's, there's no change. There's aye. no change. I'll move to accept the October minutes. Second. Awesome. Second. All in favor? Aye. aye. Sorry. Uh, awesome. No, no uh, all opposed. No, none opposed. <laughs> Great. Okay. Uh, is there any other new business? 
Hearing none. Correspondence. Uh, correspondence. I got a letter from Attorney Radigan in the mail, which we already looked at. Um, sorry, there was something from the city of Rochester which doesn't make sense to me. Um, notice of a public hearing um, to be held Thursday, November 9th, uh, concerning the following um, Echo Site and T Mobile applicant for a request for a special exemption for construction of the wireless communication facility. On uh, Meterborough Road in Rochester. I don't know why this is coming to Wellness. They may have deemed it a uh, project of potential regional impact. Okay. Yeah, I don't know where that was before from it's, Rochester. And we well, Sunday, I think, sent us a letter when Sunday yeah. was being developed. We right. some, yeah, an opportunity to be. Okay. To if you're fashion. planning to attend the meeting, have paperwork you wish to have reviewed. If you're Unless not planning to attend. The other thing is, if the town of Rochester put on a land, a piece of land with a bucket, I don't think so. We've gotten this. Um, we've gotten this. Um, we're looking. Uh, no, no, well, it's, it's, it's like way over. Oh, it's, it's like next to west um, side of Rochester. Yeah, it's like not anywhere it's near. December 5th. No, this part of me. Oh, the oh no, this is like, I'm sorry. Yeah. 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 Just down the road, which is interesting because um, we go to that farm, butter, and farm all the time. Correct. Yeah. Which is on the farm side of the line. Yeah. 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 To adjourn. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. um, I think we're here. I need, I need oh. a second. I need a second. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 We are adjourned.